Okay. We'll start with the mayor's report and the reports of the committees. Under my report, just a couple of items. Uh, last Wednesday, I attended the Chamber of Commerce's monthly meeting at the library. Uh, I spoke with them about what, our account, uh, what we accomplished in 2022 and what we're looking to do in 2000, 2023. They have already started the, um, the, uh, the 5K run that they're going to be doing in May. Uh, they'll have their first meeting at the end of this month. And they elected the new offices at the meeting, and also they have about two or three new businesses that uh, joined the chamber. So the chamber is very active, and they are looking for any residents who know people that own businesses in the town who want to join them, just let them know. Also, on Friday with uh, Councilwoman Sarah Kohler and Kelly, our clerk, we attended the ribbon cutting of the nail salon across the street. The woman who owns um, Red Bowl also now owns the, the uh, nail salon. And she had a ribbon cutting ceremony for everyone to be at. That's all I have to report right now. Financial Administrative Committee, Mr. Shalero. Thank you, Mayor. So we've been talking about scheduling our budget meetings for 2023. And we do have a couple of dates that uh, we've confirmed. The budget meetings will take place on Saturday, February 4th, Tuesday, February 7th. The goal is to have the budget prepared for introduction on March 14th. So if additional meetings are needed after the 7th, we'll announce those. This past week, the Library Board of Trustees held its reorganization meeting as well. Appointments for 2023 included Heather Del Piano as the superintendent's representative and Don Shalaro as the mayor's representative. There were no other appointments. Election of officers for the board. For president for 2023, Dave Marino. Vice President Rick Vanderwen. Treasurer Billy Smithison, Corresponding Secretary Joanne Mitchell, and Recording Secretary Don Shalaro. I couldn't give that job away another year again. Uh, we also approved the library budget for 2023. And uh, just like the borough, the library also has its reorganization in terms of uh, consent resolution, setting up accounts, and whatnot. And uh, that is all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Fire and Police Protection Committee, Councilman Saracola. Thank you, Mayor. Starting with the Police Department, on 117 at approximately 10 p.m., Officer LaPrinzi observed a 2018 Honda CRV commit several motor vehicle violations on Wyckoff Ave. A Ramsey resident was stopped and placed under arrest for DWI. In addition to the DWI, the driver was issued summons for failure to maintain lane and open containers in a motor vehicle. Sergeant Sinclair and Officer Cheney also assisted. Only about 12 hours later, the Waldeck Police received a report of a motor vehicle that struck a pole on Harrison Ave and left the scene. Responding officers identified a witness to the crash and collected evidence left at the scene that allowed police officers Sanchez, Freeman, and Van Dyke to track the vehicle to the driveway of an Allendale residence. The woman was placed under arrest for DWI. Moving on, on the 21st at approximately 1.56 a.m., Officer Walsh made another motor vehicle stop after observing a vehicle failing to stop at a stop sign at the intersection of Hammond Place and Wyckoff Avenue. Following field sobriety tests, the driver, a Waldeck resident, was placed under arrest and transported to police headquarters. The driver subsequently submitted breath samples and was charged with disregard of a stop sign, DWI, and careless driving. Also on that same day, January 21st at 11.30 p.m., police officer Wanamaker stopped a motor vehicle for failing to come to a complete stop at the intersection of Harrison and Wyckoff Ave. The driver, a Fort Lee resident, was processed at police headquarters and issued summonses for DWI, open container of alcohol, or unsealed cannabis in a motor vehicle, disregard of a stop sign, and reckless and careless driving. Moving on to the fire department. So far for January, the department has responded to 11 calls for service, three of them being mutual aid. They had two drills so far. One was the inventory and inspection of the entire department's rope and equipment. This inspection happens at a minimum once a year to ensure that all rope is safely in working order. Their second drill focused on the year fast ref team refresher. The department responds as a fast team to multiple agencies and our mutual aid as a fast team, so this yearly refresher allows members to review the tools and equipment needed. Hands-on training also happens every year. While doing all of that, members are still performing their annual mask fit testing, which is a New Jersey state requirement that must be fulfilled by any member who responds to fire calls. Thank you. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Councilman Sher Sherman. Thank you. On January 16th, I attended the Waldwick Volunteer Ambulance Corps General Meeting. 
I was introduced to more of the members and pardon me, they took the time to explain details to me and welcomed me as their liaison. President of the Ambulance Corps, Dave Barthold, announced his appointments for the year. Uh, they discussed training and re recertification opportunities for the members because members are required to take many classes and research per year. They have posted their scholarship opportunities for the high school students. They provide multiple scholarships up there for people interested in the medical field. Uh, WALVAC has their ongoing fundraising campaign and we want to remind residents that they are always available and could use some financial assistance for residents to purchase medical supplies, water, and training sessions. They need to replace several EpiPens and they cost hundreds of dollars each. Uh, so they're looking for people to make their donations. Uh, Waldwick Ambulance Corps members are available for upcoming standby um, needs and they always are scheduling their volunteers for these different functions. Um, they have some events scheduled and um, just want us to let them know if we have any more upcoming where their services will be needed. Uh, they have several problems with the building, which I mentioned to Patrick earlier. The uh, push bar is not working on their door and the light by the back door um, above the stairs is out and the ladies room door is cracked and broken so those things need to be repaired um, let's see wednesday night crew chief ben heimson gave a report um, stating that they had a cpr save uh, where they actually brought the gentleman back um, and that same crew the next week helped deliver a baby en route to the hospital. So I was wondering if um, it would be possible to bring this four person crew here to recognize them and honor them at a future council meeting. Perhaps we could pre present them with a certificate and just recognize them. I don't know how to go about arranging that, but I would love to see that happen, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Not a problem. Thank you. Um, on February 23rd, members of the Ambulance Corps will be at a library presentation. They were asked to come and help along and discuss the Ambulance Corps with the children and give some tours of their new ambulance. The, the members were excited for this opportunity and many were signing up for it. Um, I again want to acknowledge how dedicated the members of WALVAC are and applaud them for all their work they do for our residents. And I look forward to my next meeting, um, which is in the month of February. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Recreation and Health Committee, Councilman Weber. Thank you very much. Public Works Committee, Councilman Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor. 
catch my breath. So the um, quick quick update today, Mayor. So the uh, the first bulk pickup uh, went through very well. People are calling. They are scheduling. So uh, it's going well. And if you need to uh, have your bulk trash picked up, just remember to call and schedule. It is snow season. Uh, so please remember when it snows to keep your car off the road. And if you have any questions on procedure, you can look on the back of your calendar. I also had a chance to uh, attend the Board of Ed meeting last night. It was a nice meeting. They uh, inducted a new member uh, of trustee, new trustee in, uh, discussed uh, the ongoing budget. They're moving to phase three at the high school in February. And they, this was kind of cool. I, I, Hockey to Waldwick High School is new, and they brought the first puck that was ever scored uh, in the history and kind of inducted that into the school that will now be on display forever. So it was a nice, it was kind of a nice, uh, nice event. That's my uh, report for this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. On the Building and Grounds Committee, Councilman Schatz is not here, but he gave me a report to read. Um, first of all, the Borough Hall Rehab contractor is making submittals to our architect. Work should begin in the next 30 days. Also, the parking lot expansion. The lighting upgrades were completed this week, well, last week, and they, we will wait until spring to redo the uh, final paving and also do all the planting upgrades. The 2023 budget, uh, himself and uh, our administrator, have evaluated the borough buildings to determine uh, the 2023 budget needs. They are working with the, with, every, with the DBW to finalize everyone's request. Also, the PSE&G lighting upgrades in Borough Hall should begin late February. They're, up, they're upgrading all the lighting so everything will be uh, LED uh, light fixtures. And that's all he has to report. Borough Administrator, Patrick. No report. Thank you, Mayor. Borough Clerk, Kelly. No report. Thank you, Mayor. Grant Administrator, Matthew. No report. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Let's do this. Clean sweep. Borough Attorney, Craig. No, thank you, Mayor. No report. Okay. Are we going into close tonight? Nothing for close. Okay. Consent resolutions and resolutions of the governing body. Be it resolved that the following resolutions herewith listed by consent, having been considered by the governing body of the Borough of Waldwick, are hereby passed and approved. 2023-76, approval of consent. Policy vote A. Kayla Gunderson requests to use Pavilion A on April 8th from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. for a private event with alcoholic beverages being served. 2023-77, approval of minutes, recess December 13, 2022, regular meeting held January 3rd, 2023, reorganization meeting January 3rd, 2023, and the regular meeting of January 10th, 2023. 2023-78, authorize acceptance of the 2022 Bergen County Open Space Trust Fund Municipal Program Grant for municipal park improvements, Brookview Park, pedestrian footbridge, and primitive walking trail. 2023-79, authorize increase of non-fair and open, open-ended contract with H2M and Associates, H2M architects and engineers in an amount not to exceed $27,681. 2022, I'm sorry, 2023-80, award a uh, fair and open contract with Bryan Electric for the DF. DCFC charging station and installation, the amount of $254,113.94. 2023-81, amend a non-fair and open contract to Boswell Engineering for design, construction, administration, and inspection services for water treatment at various wells in the amount of $220,000. 2023-82, authorize, authorize special budget meetings various. 2023-83, appointment of emergency temporary health for John Milano and Jim O'Connell. 2023-84, approval of appropriation transfer, and 2023-85, approval, uh, I'm sorry, payment of vouchers. Do we have a motion and a second? Motion by Councilman Schlero, second by Councilman Ritchie. On the question, sir. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so on the uh, uh, approval of the appropriation transfer, we've done these at previous meetings, but for those who may not be aware, um, this is for in our 2022 budget that um, we have certain line items that are, have insufficient funds and we have other line items in our budget that have a, a surplus of funds. So this isn't new spending. We're not approving any new spending. This is just balancing our line items so that uh, we don't have negative uh, balances in any of them. So we're going to be transferring money from group insurance to borough clerk, tax collector, buildings and grounds, and fuel oil. 
That's all I have. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Um, I just had a question on check number 18688. Uh, sorry, 18687. Uh, payment of $500 to Cantor Ellen Tillam for the menorah lighting. Um, did we know about this in advance? And does any other uh, pastor that or religious figure that we invite to Waldwick events charge us? This is very unusual to me, and it really stuck out to me. The Cantor told us about it ahead of time. And honestly, I'm not going to, in front of the public, talk about people's different religions and what they charge or not. If you want to know anything else, you can speak to Kelly or myself privately. But we did know about the $500. She didn't charge last year, but she charged, excuse me? I'm sorry? We, this is what they charged us. They charged us $500. This is what the cantor charges. Every church, every religion charges a different price. And this is what she charged us. If you feel that's an issue, then we won't have a cantor here next year. Uh, you, you made a comment. Oh, okay. 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 My, my question was... I know, and I, and I just... I'm sorry? Yeah. It's not a back and forth. Right. She told us ahead of time what she was charging, which was $500. She didn't charge last year because last year she did it for the first time. This year she had a blessed menorah, and then she had a ceremony with the children there and things of that nature. It's not a back and forth. It's not a, you could talk at, on the new business. My, my question, my concern was not, it was paying up any money for um, a service by a clergy person um, when I don't believe we've ever paid in the past. Every religion charges a price. Some do, some don't. Have we if ever you, paid in the past? She didn't charge us last year. She's charging us this year. Well, she charged us this year. What about for any other? We ceremony? asked for some. We asked them what they want to charge, and some of them, well, most of them don't charge. But these are people that are living in our community. This woman was on the outside. She she came from Teaneck. We could not get any other cantor to come out because the day in which we did the ceremony was also the day that everyone else had their own <coughs> ceremony in their own community. Thank you. Clark, please take the roll. Mayor, I have one item for oh. resolutions, if you don't mind. <clears throat> I just want to highlight uh, resolution 2023-81. This is a contract amendment with Boswell for the uh, administration and inspection of water treatment at various wells. Uh, the only highlight on this is that the in the packet that you received last week, it was for a new contract in the same amount. The amount hasn't changed. Uh, today, I requested uh, that the clerk changes to a contract amendment with the original contract. Again, for an increase in the same amount, but it keeps it cleaner on my end in terms of having the same PO um, and the same contract instead of duplicate of both. That's the only change, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Clerk, please take the roll. Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? Yes. Mrs. Weber? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we have no uh, public hearings. Introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk kindly read ordinance number 2023-01? Ordinance number 2023-01, an ordinance to create Chapter 35 Business Insurance Registry and requiring liability insurance and annual registration requirements for businesses and owners of a rental unit or units in the revised general ordinances of the Borough of Waldwick. A motion to second is in order to pass this ordinance on first reading and that it will be advertised in local legal newspapers required by law setting a public hearing two weeks from tonight's meeting at 7.30 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion by Mr. Ritchie, second by Mr. Shalero on the question. Yes. Well, I'm happy to start, but the attorney clearly knows more about this than I, but essentially what we were told is that there's a new state law in effect and it's uh, requiring certain business owners and owners of multifamily rental units to, um, I guess, provide evidence of insurance to the borough. And we now have to keep those records in there. There are requirements about the certain levels of coverage that they need to have. Um, just reading between the lines, I'm guessing there have been incidents somewhere in the state 
where business owners have not uh, provided insurance for their business or their tenants. Uh, you know, so it's hard to really know what's driving this. But essentially, that this isn't something we're initiating. It's something that we're doing to comply with the new state requirement under what's uh, said in the, our ordinance, S-1368. Would you like to continue? Sure. Anyone else? Clerk, please take the roll. Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? Yes. Mrs. Weber? Yes. Okay, would the clerk kindly read ordinance number 2023-02? Ordinance number 2023-02, in ordinance amending chapter 29, alcoholic beverages, section 29-12, hours of operation restricted to clarify restricted hours seven days a week. A motion and a second is in order to pass this ordinance on first reading and that it be advertised in local legal newspapers right, required by law setting a public hearing two weeks from tonight's meeting at 7.30 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion by Mrs. Saracola, second by Mr. Schlero. On the question. Yeah, this was a change requested by the police department that the clerk and I reviewed, and it's really just to make it uniform um, the hours that uh, alcoholic um, beverages are able to be served in a licensed premises. So it'll be consistent uh, 365 days a year as to they are not allowed to serve alcoholic beverages between the hours of 2 a.m. and 11 a.m. Previously, there had been exceptions for around New Year's Day, depending on whether it fell on a weekday or a weekend, and allowed them to stay open until 5 a.m. in the morning, which generally our, our uh, establishments in town don't, and the police department viewed it um, as a, uh, something that should not be allowed and not, you know, it's not going on right now. And for the ease of explaining these regulations to the establishments, they asked us to make this change. Anyone else? If not, clerk, please take the roll. Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? Yes. Mrs. Weber? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> on their unfinished business, just one item on the unfinished business. A couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, I talked to you about an Eagle Scout that wanted to do an Eagle Scout project. He's the uh, Eagle Scout whose sister did the path at the HDA Park. He was going to do the um, do some work at Tamron, doing all the new signage and the numbers on the doors. But unfortunately, he backed out of that for certain reasons. So what he he met with me the other day, and what he's deciding to do is a continuation of his sister's project. So what he's going to do is I told him to set up a plan. Matt was in the room with me. Matt and him talked. We all talked. And he's going to get back to us with a, with a plan, with a path going into the other area. He wanted to know some questions. I think you already emailed, emailed yeah. him stuff. And Matt already emailed him everything he needed. Once he gives us all the reports back, then we'll have him come in and explain to us what he wants to do. That's the only thing I have for unfinished business. Anybody in the council unfinished business? Nope. New business. Anybody in the council have new business? No new business. Okay. Public business comments. Anybody from the public would like to comment? Please come up to the microphone. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm, I apologize. I didn't turn the thing around. So you, yeah, thank you. Hi, it's uh, Mike McHugh, uh, 79 Bergen Ave. I just have a question, and then uh, I want to just share something with you also. Um, last week I saw there was a uh, in my area of town, there were some of the uh, strips in the streets. Was that part of the traffic study that we've been talking about? It was, yes. Okay. So I think I only saw them in the streets for a few days. Is there, are they going to do it more, or are they just collecting enough data from that one sample? Yeah, we collected data for one 24-hour period. Oh, okay. Okay. I was, I was hoping it would be more than that, because weekends are also different than weekdays. Um, okay. So, if you remember, I uh, requested the crash data from the Waldwick Police, and I got that back in September-ish. And um, sorry, I'm a little late with this, but uh, I got, got kind of busy in the fall. Um, so, I have a pre preliminary uh, results I want to share with you. I have not reviewed reviewed these with Officer uh, Lieutenant Seifert yet, 
So I just want to just give you a little heads up, and then I'll talk to him, see if he has any comments, and I'll send it to you officially at some point. Um, so Officer uh, Lieutenant Seifert gave me uh, crash data for the entire town of Waldwick um, from 2018 through approximately mid-2022, so about a little four and a half year uh, period. And what I did was looked at the crash data between the, the grid from Route 17 South north of East Prospect and west of Franklin Turnpike, right? So that grid of where I live, in Bergen Ave. What I excluded from there was any, you know, cars that back out of driveways and hit cars, which is quite a bit of that. Uh, some side swipes. Um, overnight, people getting their cars hit. And in the, in in the uh, in little industrial section of East Prospect, there's a lot of uh, parking lot accidents, Little, a lot of rear endings there, just in that little stretch. So for this purpose, my first pass, I excluded all of that. And I just concentrated on the, the grid, right? So uh, accidents within the grid. And, and really, it was interesting that it's really two main things, right? It's cars <laughs> coming off of 17 onto these streets or going on to Route 17 is one group of accidents. And the other accidents are the, all the intersections. So say Bergen and Nordham, Ridge and Center Street, whatever it is. Um, so over the, 50, over the uh, four and a half year period of these crashes, there was 55 um, accidents. Um, 28 of them were in the intersections of the grid. Um, and 27 of them were people coming on and off the Route 17. So it's almost a 50-50 split. Um, sadly, there was one uh, fatal accident. Um, so I, I've noted that in here. Um, and what's, what stands out to me, it's a couple of things that stand out to me, is uh, the poor owner of 190 Summit Ave uh, has had their house and property uh, hit eight times over the past four and a half years. So. More than once a year, they have end up with a car and the fatality, the fatality, that's where the fatality also happened, it was sad. Um, and then Bergen Avenue, there was nine uh, incidents, five cars coming off the highway that crashed into either 141 or 142 Bergen Ave, um, and four cars that were pulling onto the highway from Bergen crashed into somebody on Route 17 or caused some sort of accident. Um, we had 22 accidents of these, of these 22 uh, in the whole grid resulted in residential property damage. So a car ended up in someone's lawn. Um, of these Route 17 intersection accidents, so people coming on and off the highway, or people coming off of Route 17 onto the grid, 91% of those people were out of towners. So. And then for the people going onto the highway, there was two that were unknown, but we assume that they were out of towners, all of those. So probably about 95% of the accidents uh, coming on and off Route 17 were uh, at fault of the out of towner person. Um, and then the, in, in the residential is about 50-50. Um, what else do I want to say? That's about it. So I just wanted to tell you that that's the number of accidents there's, that's out there. This is my first pass on a review with uh, Lieutenant Seifert. See if he wants to include anything else. Um, on the crash data reports, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, numbers indicating if it's speed and factor, alcohol, things like this. I didn't put any of that in here, just fewer numbers. So just want to share that with you and review with him, and then I'll get it to you guys to review and either it's be part, be part of that traffic survey maybe um, and hopefully may at some point be submitted to the state to see uh, if anything needs to be done or if they suggest something to be done. When you speak to the, the Lieutenant Seifert and you arrange a meeting with him, yes. just make sure our administrator Patrick's with you. Okay. He should be there to review everything too. Okay. Yep. Even though you said it to us now, oh sure, it'll be good to have the three of you there together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my first stab at it. So yeah. if I forgot anything or yeah, something else, you guys want to right. include, right. 
I'm all for but it. Patrick's so. been behind all this too with the approach. Yes. Best thing to do is both to use me with the lieutenant, even if you have to come into into our building or go into the police department. I'm, set up a meeting and you. I'm it. very flexible. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Whatever whatever you need. Good. So thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much. Anyone else have anything? If not, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion by uh, Councilman Chalero, second by Councilman Ritchie. All those in favor? Aye.